Well, today is Tuesday. It is August 27th, 5th, excuse me, 5th. And it is a glorious day. It is an opportunity to continue to learn and grow from God. Um, yesterday we talked about being people of God. Yesterday we talked about being predestined in order for salvation and how that's just not a small group of people. That is everyone, every human being is destined, is set apart to be saved. That's the promise of God. That's the promise of God through Jesus Christ. And when people believe in Jesus Christ for their salvation, they are saved. That's God's promise. When they believe that their sins, no matter how grievous their sins may be, how uh, challenging that they may be, when you put your faith and trust in the work of Jesus Christ, you are saved. And how that salvation drives you uh, further. And how that helps you to realize that I've been justified, that I've been called by God, uh, called by God to live my life. So that's where we left off yesterday. Uh, we will continue from there into the rest of chapter 8 in Romans. So why don't you grab your Bibles and turn to Romans 8. And again, uh, if you're interested in an electronic version, just go to your app store, type in Bible, and uh, look for a Bible uh, app. Uh, there's a lot of them that are free. Um, check them out and see which ones are available. Uh, if you're looking for a paper one, uh, let us know that uh, what you're looking for. You can email me, Pastor Robert at faithhunsel.org, and you can uh, at request the Bible, and we'll make sure we get one to you. So, I'm writing a note. All right, let's take a look. Chapter 8 of Romans, starting in verse 30, moving forward from there. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called... He also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Absolutely. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Exclamation point, drop the mic, done. That's it. Nothing in this world will able be able to separate us from God's love for us in Jesus Christ. Think about it for a minute. Ponder on this one in your heart. This love that God has given to us, it doesn't care about what he needed. What we need is the most important thing. We need salvation. We need grace. We need his love. And that's what he pours out to us. Now, is that going to be the Calgon take me away moment? No, it's not. God loves us. Jesus died for us to forgive us of all of our sins. That is a great and wonderful proclamation and statement. That's what we live for. That's what we live in. We have a new life, a new life that lives today because of forgiveness of Jesus' sacrifice. We have a new life because Jesus was the fulfillment of all of that's law. <clears throat> and we have 
the new life because of Jesus' resurrection today and forever with him in heaven. That's God's promise. And no matter what we may face in this world, none of that will ever, and I repeat, ever separate us from God's love. Now, we may interpret this in a lot of things. We may interpret this as saying, well, if I'm facing all of these problems, I need, I must be really, really bad if I'm having all these issues. I mean, it kind of goes back to the whole Friends of Job thing. Job was experiencing all this horrific things that were happening to him, the loss of home, the loss of income, the loss of family, all these losses, his health was going to pot. And his friends were just sitting there waiting for Job to say something. Then they said, in, in summary, Job, you must have been really, really bad for God to lay all of this on you. Job says, I, it's, it's not me. Why did God lay this on Job? It's actually, it's interesting because that's what Satan did, but God allowed it. Nonetheless, here's the thing. Job believed. Job was a person full of grace and truth, and yet bad stuff still happened to him. The same thing with us as believers, along with unbelievers. We all face bad stuff. Why? Because there is sin in the world. There is sin in our hearts. There are times when we are ignorant of God. So there, there are times when we look at what God may or may not be doing throughout these troubles, and therefore we're going, <sighs> you know, what people are saying, why did this COVID-19 thing kick in? Well, human beings are sinful. How we respond to sinful things is sinful sometimes. And now we've got this, um, uh, hurricane building up in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, where it's going to make landfall, they're still trying to guess, but it looks like it's going to be somewhere between Houston and New Orleans. Uh, it depends upon the degree, east or west. But people are prepping for it. That it's a disaster yet to come. That's what they're thinking. So you better be ready for it. <sighs> Bad things happen in this world, and we ask the question, why is God angry at me? Well, here's the answer. God is not angry at you. That's not why bad things happen. Bad things happen because there is sin in the world. What God is saying to you, nothing is going to separate me from you as far as my love for you. I will always pour out my love for you. Even the bad things that happened to his son, Jesus Christ, the bad things that happened to him, the man's inhumanity, the man that encapsulated all upon Jesus, the not just the crucifixion, but you have to understand everything that Jesus went through for us. Then we look at, oh my word, the horror, the torture, the abuse, the beatings, people leaving him for dead, but yet... Jesus had needed for our sake to endure even more. Wow. He did that for us. So that even though we have we endure trials and tribulations here on this earth, what Jesus did is just proof positive that God suffered and died for us. And that no matter what may happen in our lifetimes, we know that God loves us. And God will always, 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 always lead us through these trials and tribulations. So who is to condemn? As Paul asks the question, Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, the one who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or disaster or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, danger or sword? In other words, shall anything separate us? No, absolutely not. Never will, never can, never going to happen. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. 
we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Think about it. Through what Jesus Christ has done for us, the love. We are conquerors of sin, death, and the influence of Satan. We have now the strength, the power, the grace, the spirit to say to sin, get behind me. You are doing nothing but influencing me to either grumble, complain, or disobey. No, 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 no. We are conquerors of all of this, so therefore, let us live life. And here's the kicker, for I am sure, positive, certain, convicted, convinced, whatever word you want to use to describe this attitude that we have, that no matter what may happen, they may be scary, it may be problematic, it may be frustrating, it may be aggravating, but none of that, none of that, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Boom, mic drop, done. Therefore, nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, will be able to separate us from God's love that is in Jesus Christ. Done. Forget about it. And so that's what guides us today and every day, that no matter what I face, God still loves me. God's still always with me. God in Jesus Christ loves me. Let that guide you today and every day. All right. I will talk to you later tomorrow and we'll I'll be posting up some other videos. But for now, we'll talk to you later. Have a great one, guys. Bye-bye.